<laughs> up next, we have Cristiano. Give it up. <laughs> I have an introduction. So Chris received his undergraduate and graduate degrees in architecture at UB, a very distinguished school. Uh, for the past 14 years, he has served as an instructional support technician in the Department of Art at the University of Buffalo. In 2011, in collaboration with his brother Matthew, he formed HES Properties, a real estate development company focusing on mixed-use development on Buffalo's west side, which I think we'll hear a bit about tonight. So give it up for Chris. Yeah. I have a couple of videos. They run about four and a half minutes, so I'm just going to talk a little bit before we start the video. Uh, in 2012, my brother and I formed the real estate development company, HES Properties, and we were looking for a neighborhood to uh, work in, and we settled on the west side of Buffalo uh, because the west side of Buffalo is uh, really undervalued in a lot of ways. It has a lot of great things going for it, uh, density, diversity. Uh, uh, Grant Street in particular has a fairly intact uh, streetscape, uh, multimodal transportation, uh, the second busiest bus line in the city of Buffalo, close proximity to Buffalo State College, and the Richardson Complex, the 190, the 198, uh, Allentown. So we per in uh, 2012, we purchased 368 Grand Street, which is directly across the street from the building I'm going to talk about tonight. Uh, that building uh, is 6,000 square feet. Uh, it had 1,500 square feet of ground level retail and two residential apartments above. Uh, the building was uh, 100 years old. It uh, was sitting vacant for about 10 years. The roof was falling into the third floor and the first floor was falling into the basement. So we had a fairly extensive renovation over the course of 24 months. Uh, in, in the process of renovating that building, we sort of developed a, a team and that team included our architect, John Wingfelder, our uh, general contractor, BRD Incorporated, and our attorneys, Gibson, McCaskill, and Crosby. While we were working on 368, uh, directly across the street from 368 was a vacant lot. And through a property record search, we determined that the property was owned by the city of Buffalo. So we put in an application to purchase the property, uh, which we did in uh, late 2013. So uh, we were finishing up 368 Grand Street, and for a while we were just sort of sitting on the lot, and we did a site analysis, and we uh, just sort of did a kind of a cursory schematic design as to what we were going to do on the building. And uh, we, at that point, uh, this, the governor put out the uh, Buffalo Billion, and part of the Buffalo Billion was the Better Buffalo Fund, which uh, had two tracks. One track was for non-for-profits, uh, grants, and the other track was low interest loans for the permanent financing on new construction. So at that point, we had owned the lot, we had a schematic design, we had a track record across the street. Uh, we had done a phase one, so we applied for and we received uh, financing through the Better Buffalo Fund, uh, which was pretty critical for us. Uh, one of the things that uh, doesn't really get a lot of coverage in archi at architecture school, but is very important are the finances. And it is very difficult to do infill because there's really not a lot of financial products out there for people looking to do it. If you're trying to buy a house, you get a 30-year fixed loan, which the bank is happy to give you and finance 80 or 90 percent of your house because they can sell that back to the government. But when it comes to mixed-use development, it's, there really aren't products and they're not selling it back to the government. So the terms of that financing uh, tend to be much more onerous than uh, your single-family house. So the calculus that the bank uses is they essentially take your net income, they divide it by 0.7 and they multiply it by 70%. So the bank simply says, if your building generates $100,000 of income, we will loan a million dollars on that project. Uh, irrespective of what the construction costs are or anything else. So oftentimes there's a fairly large gap between the construction costs and what the bank is willing to lend. So the Better Buffalo Fund, which I think obviously was a pretty great to us, but I think is also very good for Buffalo, really fills in the gap for urban infill and it allowed us to execute this particular project. Um, one thing I do want to say about Buffalo's renaissance is that a lot of that renaissance is really predicated on a couple of different things. Number one, historic tax credits, and uh, number two, uh, tax abatement through a program, the 45A or the 45B program, which is a state program that the city of Buffalo uh, has bought into. So essentially, because 
the lending is so difficult on a lot of these projects, one way that developers can sort of make up the difference on the, the carrying costs is by selling historic tax credits or getting uh, property tax abatement. Unfortunately, because we were a new build, we weren't able to get either of those, so really the viability of this project was dependent on that financing through Better Buffalo. Uh, so this particular building, uh, just quickly, a few things that we were able to do here, um, one of which was uh, geothermal heat. Uh, the building is heated and cooled through geothermal, which I knew very little about prior to this project, uh, it, but essentially involves, it's essentially uh, solar energy, but essentially harvesting solar energy from the earth. So water is pumped down into the earth, and in the winter, heat is drawn from the earth, and in the summer, uh, heat is deposited back into the earth. So we are able to heat and cool the building with no uh, natural gas. Uh, there is a small use uh, increase in electrical usage, but uh, down the road we hope to essentially do a solar array on the roof to get close to net zero on the, on the building. We don't have enough surface area on the building itself to be completely net zero, but we can get pretty close. Uh, the building has 2,500 square feet of ground level retail, 11 residential apartments. Uh, we are looking for tenants currently, so if anyone knows anyone looking for a space. Uh, but uh, having done this entire process, I will tell you that uh, I, I can see that the, the stumbling block or the difficulty in doing projects like this in the city of Buffalo really comes down to the financials. So uh, if I were to uh, get the mayor's ear, one thing I would say to him would be uh, if, he, if we could find a way to create funding for projects like this, it would do a lot uh, to service uh, small infill developers in the city of Buffalo. So, I'm running, I still have some more time here. What else can I tell you about the building? <laughs> uh, well, there, <laughs> those are Pella windows. I can't say enough about Pella, it's a wonderful company. <laughs> um, and we have purchased two more lots up the street, so we hope to do more development on the block. Thank you.